PJAX is a jQuery plugin written by Chris Wanstroth that allows you to easily swap out a section of a page using AJAX instead of doing a full HTTP request. For example, there are several links here on this demo page, and when you click on one without PJAX enabled, it's going to do a full page load, and notice at the time on the top left, it is actually changing every time. But if we enable PJAX, then on the next link we click on, notice that the time does not change because it's using a PJAX request and only updating the section of the page that it's enabled. Now this uses push state, which means that the user won't even notice that AJAX is going on in the background. It updates the URL properly, it handles the back button with the browser history, and the title bar changes as well. So all these benefits, and it also degrades gracefully, so if the user doesn't have JavaScript enabled or doesn't have a browser that supports push state, it will just fall back to a normal HTTP request. All right, so how do we integrate PJAX into our Rails application? Well, there are several ways, but let's try them out. So here's the Rails application we'll be working with. As you can see, we have a list of products here. And when we click on a product, we get some information about the product on the side here. But currently, it's using a full HTTP request just to provide that information. As you can see, the page is refreshing. And notice I have a layout random number and a template random number, which is in each of the template views. And if we click on a new product, notice that it's refreshing both of them. So our entire page is refreshing here. And also notice that the title on the window here matches the title of the selected product. So let's see how we can use PJAX to only update the areas that need to be updated uh, with AJAX. There is a gem called PJAX Rails by David Hanemeyer Hansen that makes it super easy to add PJAX to a Rails 3.1 app. However, I think its use case is pretty limiting, but let me just show you it here and then you can see if it fits the needs of your application. First, I'll just go into the gem file here and add PJAX Rails and then run the bundle command to install it. And then next, I'll go into the application JavaScript file here and require PJAX here so it loads the necessary JavaScript. And then next, go into your application layout file and add a div around the yield call here and give it a data attribute of a PJAX container. And then that's it. So now when you restart your application, every link on here will now have PJAX enabled. And you can test it out by just clicking on it and notice that it's not loading the entire page here, it's only changing the inner template through AJAX. So it makes it feel a lot faster. And notice that the layout random number is staying the same while the template random number changes whenever we click on a product. However, also notice that it's not changing the title of the window here. It's not putting the product name in the window title. Now you can fix this by going into your inner template, in this case our index template, and then add a title tag into here. Now this feels a little bit hackish to me, I don't like putting titles outside the head, but it works for our case here. And then you just put the title in here. Now I already have a content for title up above as you can see, so I'll just yield that, and that way it displays our title inside of our template. And so now when we reload here and click on a product, it's actually going to change the title of the product the title of the window here to that product properly. And also notice that we have a full browsable back button, which fully works, and the URL properly updates as well. So from the user's perspective, everything works the same way, but it just feels a bit faster, which I think is really great, but I think the PJAX Rails gem is a bit too aggressive for my taste. Having every single link PJAX enabled, uh, I think I prefer to selectively choose which links have PJAX. Now there are ways to disable PJAX on certain links, but just having to keep track of that and determining which links are going to change the layout file and which aren't is a bit of a pain. But if you have a very simple application where the layout file always stays the same, then you may want to consider this. Another issue is that, as far as I can tell, it's always just going to update the whole template. It would be nice if there was a way to just set a certain section of a page, such as the side section here, to update through PJAX and then have everything else work like normal. Now this got me thinking. It should be possible to make something that's a little more flexible using Rack Middleware. And I was going to do this, but someone beat me to it. There's a gem called Rack PJAX by GitHub user eval, which does just this. Let me show you how it works. First, go to your gem file and add Rack PJAX here, and I'll comment out PJAX Rails so we don't get any conflicts. Now make sure to run the bundle command to install it. And then next, we need to add the included Rack Middleware. And I'll do this inside of the application.rb file in the config directory. So inside of here, you just call config 
uh, dot middleware dot use and then pass in rack pjax into here. Now rack pjax doesn't come with the jQuery plugin embedded, so you'll need to install that separately. I'm just going to add this to the vendor uh, assets JavaScripts directory, and then I'll run this curl command to download it. Notice it's called jQuery.pjax. And so I need to include this file inside of my application.js manifest here. Instead of just simple pjax, it will be jQuery.pjax, which is the file I just downloaded. Now you also need to specify which specific links pjax should be enabled on. So I'll do this inside of my product's CoffeeScript file. And so let me first make sure that the DOM is loaded here, and then I can fetch all the links that I want to uh, enable. So I'm going to fetch all the links under the product div, and I just call pjax on here. And then you need to specify what you want to update, and it should always be the data pjax container, like that. And what's also nice is that it doesn't require you to put a title tag inside of your inner template. It'll just automatically fetch it from the layout. So now once you restart your application, you get very similar functionality here where you just click on a product, it instantly shows up, and notice that the random number for the layout stays the same. But our title is changing, even though it's not specified in the template, because it detects it from the layout. However, what's really cool is that I can move this data pjax container anywhere I want. It's not restricted just to the layout file surrounding the yield call here. In this case, I will place it inside of my index template surrounding the product details section here, which is that little side section showing the uh, details of the selected product. And so once I get this set up, then it should just update that. And so now with just a quick reload of the page, now when I click on a product, it is just going to update that side section because that I know is what changes. And notice that the template random number stays the same even though we're using pjax here. Now if you're curious on how this gem works, I highly recommend you check out the code. It's really simple, it's just basically one file, less than 50 lines of code, one rack middleware that uh, just checks for the P data pjax container and returns that in a Pensy title if it found one in the layout. Pretty awesome. Now keep in mind though that this still renders the entire layout and template on the Rails server end and only afterwards it chooses which bits to send back to the user. So if you find the rendering of the template to be a big performance bottleneck, you might want to find other solutions to handle that. But I think in most Rails applications, this will work great, and just the less data you have to send back to the user, the better. Well, that's it for this episode on PJAX. I encourage you, give it a try, experiment with it, and see if it fits the needs of your application. In the pro episode this week, we will take a look at Mustache. This is a templating language which is supported by many programming languages, including Ruby and JavaScript. So this means we can take a single template and use it to render out a model in both Rails on the server side and JavaScript on the client side. This will help clean up some duplication you may find between your Rails app and JavaScript, especially if you're using JSON. To watch that episode and all other pro and revised episodes, just head on over to railscast.com pro and then sign up there for just $9 per month.